I think when you were completing some paperwork at the police station at some point relating to Abby's death, you were then arrested. I was. I went in on the... Um, it was the 28th of February. I'd gone in um, to sign the papers um, to release Abby's body as her husband. You know, I, I just had to go in and sign his official papers. I had a, an appointment at 11 o'clock in the morning at, um, at Rashidia Police Station. So the night before, I'd met some... Obviously, I'm here, here now in Dubai completely on my own. No friends. Um, um, my wife's dead. It's kind of... Um, pretty difficult and, and as any Brit sort of does when you're alone you, you try and search out your own so um, there's a there's a massive expat community over here mm -hmm. so um, I met up with a guy um, and he said look come out with you know I'll take you out for a beer you can't you know you don't want to be in a hotel room on your own you know it's not healthy for you so we went out we watched some football at um, a bar um, and then we stopped drinking about half past 12 I went to bed Got up the next day, had coffee, toast, you know, just small breakfast, and uh, went in to see the uh, commander at 11 o'clock, and sat down at, at the desk opposite him, and he was saying, "Yeah, you, you're okay." And I said, "Well, pretty tired, pretty stressed, but." Um, and then he kind of um, looked at me, said, hey, "Have you had drink?" I said, "No, no, I, I had some alcohol last night, but you know, <clears throat> I'm struggling." You know, to sleep and stuff. I I need a drink. I, I just um, I, I need to get some sleep. Uh, and obviously, you, you can't you can't buy sleeping pills over here, not the prescribed ones, because you know that's a banned substance. So, right. um, he then made a phone call and said, "Oh, the next time I was led off to be breathalysed, and I I had something in the region of twenty something milligrams. It was, you know, it was under the drink drive limit. So, you know, there's no way I'd have walked in there if I thought I was drunk. But um, unfortunately. Over here, it, it's kind of not a sliding scale. If, if you've got one milligram or a thousand milligrams, um, you're drunk. Right. You, know, you have alcohol in your system, it's end of. Is it? Despite the fact that you'd consume the alcohol on a license, in a licensed premise? Yeah, it doesn't matter. The fact is, it's, a, it's the same as people that have been um, arrested and jailed over here. Maybe, you know, if they'd been smoking some spliffs, you know, three weeks beforehand if they get found over here with that in their system that that is classed as possession over right. here so and so you were locked in a cell for four days as a result of that yeah well, um i was locked yes yeah, putting the lock up um which is kind of a sort of lord of the flies type thing it's um just uh, there, there's no there's there's cells but there's no locks on them or doors on them just open it's just um it's just find yourself a space and then and just you know, you have to buy everything, a mattress, and it's kind of self-run. There's no guards inside. Right. There's just the main door outside, and then um, there's, like, a speaker that comes out and just will call various names. To, they go to the front door, and a, a guard will come and take them out, but um, the rest of it's just uh, a f bit of a free-for-all, to be honest. Mm. And eventually you were fined for that, uh, having that alcohol <laughs> in your system. Yeah, what happened was I... I when it came out and, and they they give you the um the fight from the prosecution they give you the charge sheet and it was you know it was that having alcohol um in your basically having alcohol in a public place so you know i was in a public place with alcohol in my system um and the court date was set for the um 30th of, of april and i was kind of thinking wow this you know that's a long way off for this um but after various meetings, they said, well, no, no, it's just a standard. You're going to get a 2,000 dirham fine. Um, so I, I asked, well, could I pay that then? And they said, yeah, you just pay the fine. So I went, Julie paid the fine, got my um, fine certificate. Um, and they, I, said, I asked about the case. Um, and they said, well, it will go. To, you don't have to attend court. It will just be rubber stamps. It's, you know, this is the case number. Fine been paid. Stamps and on to the next, you know next case so so that was all fine <clears throat> um and at one stage uh, i'd asked my passport back um and i actually got my passport back i had it in my hand um which was you know it was a great feeling and i and i'd gone back to the police station <clears throat> because during my time in the uh in rashidia police station they they woke me up at 3 a.m and, and took me out some cid had took me out and they wanted to show me all the luggage our, our luggage because obviously i still had all the luggage um, and I said, yeah, fine, and, and they didn't believe, 
uh, I, I said it was in the luggage room at, at the uh, Panorama Grand Hotel. Um, and they were saying, no, it's not. I said, but it is. Um, so they took me there. And sure enough, it was all there. And then they, they just wanted everything electrical. Um, so I said, well, you know, go on, you know, crack, what do you want? So they took our laptop, Abby's mobile, my BlackBerry, um, anything, a DVD of me doing a bungee jump in South Africa. It was just, so they took all that. Um, and when I got my passport back, obviously, I, I wanted all that stuff back. So I'd gone into the police station, seen a detective and said, um, yeah, look, I had the sheet of, with all the, the stuff that, that they, had, they were holding of mine. And um, because a lot of the stuff, there were a lot of photos on that on that BlackBerry that, that hadn't been transferred anyway. They were just uh, of, of me and Abby in Cape Town, you know, doing various things, you know, on our, on our honeymoon, mm -hmm. you know. Um, <clears throat> so I really wanted to get hold of those. And I sat there and the guy said, uh, you got your passport? I said, yeah, yeah, I've got my passport back. I just want this stuff back and then I, I just want to go home. Um, and the next minute he's on the phone um, and he says, uh, give me your passport. And then I gave him my passport. He, has, he puts it in a drawer. He said, no, you're not having anything. You go now. I said, well, why? I've just had my passport back. No, no. You go away. Um, we still have to investigate. And... So that was the start of a, a very long process of, of just being told. Obviously, I speak to the consulate, you know, <clears throat> not so much on a daily basis now, but um, obviously they'll ring me if they get any updates. But after a while, you you you, you know what's going to come. You know, if I phone them, I could badger them every day. And they're just going to say, well, we phoned them up, and they said the investigation is continuing. Mm -hmm. And that's all they're going to get. So... Um, <clears throat> You know, so it's frustrating you, how, how for me. I was, I was sorry, I was just going to ask you, you're, you're in this almost like a parallel universe. How it's, are you yeah, coping I mean, with that? It's pretty tough. I mean, I, I'm lucky that I've met some really, really good um, uh, English guys over here, and an Irish guy. I met The first guy I met, uh, Dermot Hogan, was amazing. <clears throat> um, he he just met me and, you know, he just... He, he had... had um, he runs the Arab Irish Journal over here, and um, he said, look, we've got this yacht going out um, just for a two-hour cruise around the Burj Al Arab, and just have it. He said, just come on it, you need to. This was the first day that I'd, um, I, after I'd been released from the police station. So people like that just been, and you know, there's people I've met here who would be, be friends for life because mm -hmm. they've, they've just kept me going. They, they become your family, and, and you, you meet some that come and go, but there, there's a core of them that are absolutely unbelievable, and um, it's just uh, it's it's just gets you through, to be honest. Your own MP back here is Philip Hammond. Have you been able to contact him? Have you been able to? Well, try I've emailed to get him, him, and I, I I tried to get him to lobby um, um, David Cameron because I, I knew that um, the Prime Minister was bringing up the the case of the three. Um, drug offenders that got jailed here f um, with the, with the spice so i was i was kind of hoping that look i've done nothing wrong could you bring my case up as well but i did i got a reply not f direct from them but it, it was from the foreign office just saying um mr cameron will not be bringing up your case so so in um, fact had you done something wrong potentially you you might have your case might well, have been brought I mean, up it's it's <laughs> i mean that's the irony of it isn't it you, you don't do anything wrong and no one wants to help you, but you do something wrong. You you are convicted of, of doing something wrong, found guilty, and yet, you know, they're back home and free, and I'm still stuck in Dubai. Mm. Just, you know, it's just bizarre. So what can you but, do next, if anything? Well, what's happened is, I mean, um, I'd kind of, I've kept quiet because a lot of people over here were saying, oh, don't want to upset the authorities, don't want to upset the apple cart, just keep going through the due process, and you'll be gone soon. And... You know, I've been told all along the line of, from from the authorities, from the police, you, yeah, you go, you go, you know, it's palace, next weekend, you're gone, finish. Mm. So that next week came, comes and it's not, it's just like they move the goalposts every week. Um, and then finally, when, when I apply for my passport, um, back, I've even asked for a passport swap where someone lodges their passport and then I get mine so I can travel and travel home. Because bear in mind, I haven't, you know, I've just not been back. I, you know, I missed the funeral. I haven't even been able to see, you know, any kind of memorial for Abby. Um, so I just want to get get back. And they just, you know, appeal after appeal, <clears throat> and it's just come back next week. And 
you go back and it just you know it's like that sketch where you know he goes on the computer it's just the uh, computer says no mm. and back you go so i just decided david miller who runs bike sport news um a big motorcycle racing uh website he contacted me i've known him for for years and he said look i'm going to put something you know because i said I, th I don't mind actually i think now is the time i need to refresh because so many people have you know it's become apparent from twitter and all, all the responses i've got I didn't even realize i was still here I said oh i thought you were back ages ago so mm -hmm. because of this article then somebody uh, a guy called philip evans who's an ex-serviceman I, I don't know him but he, he was a big fan obviously and um he decided to set up an e-petition to the government to try and get enough signatures where you know it does have to be brought up in the, the house of commons or the house of lords um just to raise the awareness really um and then there's been a twitter campaign there's been a facebook campaign and bear in mind this only started last thursday um i've now got um just got over six thousand um signatures on the e-petition which is, is amazing because um it's it's not quite as easy as just pressing the like button on a facebook campaign people do have to put you know their address and email receive an email and then confirm um so that they they've done their vote uh, sorry their signature mm. um so i mean it is admirable and it's, it's, it's great that the some of the uk public are taking time out just to you know put a bit of weight behind it and hopefully put some pressure on someone somewhere to to kind of just go in and say excuse me what is going on mm. you know this this doesn't make sense it's illogical why is he there you just can't keep saying there's an investigation what are you investigating what on earth can you be investigating now okay sean perhaps you speaking out today will help uh, thank you very much for talking to us no you're and more than welcome we'll and i just touch. want to say thanks to everybody for supporting me and um with all your help i'll be back soon don't worry Thank you very much, Sean. Sean Emmett, talking to us in his first national broadcast interview.